Shut up and sit down. Hello there guys, it's Andy from Big Mac Workshop and Paint Studio and it's another Imperial Guard week this week and we are doing a Covisar together. So uh, get your uh, pack fired up and let's get going. So obviously it's a black base coat as always and I'm going to make a start on the face. So I'm doing the face a little bit different uh, to what I uh, normally use. It uh, comes out looking really old which is kind of cool. Uh, so to start off with Bugman's Glow as a base coat for the flesh work. Now obviously as always um, you keep the paint thin and uh, we put multiple layers of the same thing so uh, just keep on working nice and steady you want that um, coat to be nice and smooth but obviously not so thick as to kind of the detail so just be careful what you're doing with that one. So there we go we've got the uh, initial base coat on and next is a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Uh, so yeah, I'm just uh, applying this on to the um, detail work now. now. I'm wanting to keep just a touch of the Bugman's Glow visible through the uh, Cadian. Uh, so I'm not go covering every uh, area. I'm leaving just very, very thin slivers of the Bugman's Glow uh, visible to you uh, to add that depth of colour into the um, uh, features. So the next is just pure Cadian now. I'm basically doing the same again with the Cadian as I did with the uh, mix. I'm just picking out the uh, highlighted areas and I'm uh, feathering it in back a little bit just to um, overlap the pure, sorry, the um, mix colour um, with the Cadian um, pure. Uh, and I'm doing this exactly the same way as I have done with the uh, other two layers. Obviously nice and thin, uh, plenty of uh, water in your paint and just uh, pushing that um, paintwork uh, further and further back. So the next layer is a 50-50 mix of Kiss Left Flesh. Now um, again this is another GW paint and it's a really nice highlight. You can stop at this point but I, I, thought, I myself I decided to do another couple of layers and I'm still just put, uh, using the exact same system and um, pulling them uh, highlights away from the uh, last uh, layer so you get that sort of nice transitional uh, blended uh, tone to it and the next layer is pure kiss left this time and now I'm really just focusing on the uh, extreme areas of the uh, face um, and obviously the hands as well uh, so because I've used the Bugman's Glow on the uh, kiss left and you get, like I said earlier, he, he does look a very, um, very old and weathered, uh, weather beaten sort of figure. It's a really interesting uh, look what you get. And last but uh, by no means least is the final highlight, which is Moonray Flesh by right, Scale 75. Now, if you don't have Moonray Flesh, um, you could always use Screaming Skull uh, to uh, replace it um, and just go exactly the same, I'm using my finest, uh, one of my finest brushes at this point and just using the, ex the extreme points of where the uh, light would meet um, the face itself and just keep on bringing that um, feathered uh, highlights up to uh, that nice fine point. So next is, ah yes, next is I'm um, doing a little bit of work on his uh, on his lip. I'm using Bugman's Glow again and what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to add a little bit of definition to his face, just show him, uh, show his mouth off a little bit so it uh, glows out a little bit from the rest of his face. So I'm using Bugman's Glow and I'm then blending it back in with the uh, other face colours just to um, make it fit, um, although still stand out, it doesn't want to stand out too much. The trousers is heavy brown, which is a Vallejo colour, um, and this is a. I've decided to use this colour rather than you know the neat black or the dark grey what you'd expect. So so it's sort of tied in with the Lehman Ross we've got um, already painted. Uh, so it's got the same sort. So it's from the same sort of um, unit background. Just a little bit of variety uh, around the uh, model. Uh, Want to throw throw some extra colours onto him. And the sash was base coated in gory red which is a Vallejo paint 
although I do replace this colour with corn red, um, which goes straight over the top, which is a GW one. I decided I preferred the colour on that one um, a, a little bit more, as it looked a lot, uh, a lot less um, oily, uh, for want of a better term. So here we are. We've got the uh, base layers on the uh, trousers now, and the next um, thing to do is on the um, epaulets and the sort of the chest. Um, decoration which is start off with filthy brown which is a Vallejo color now I don't know um, what you could use for to re uh, replace that with GW I'd probably suggest something like Yand and Dark Sun uh, or maybe Zandri Dust would work onto the trousers again and um, it is an, it's had an Agrax wash, wash even and uh, I'm going over with Talan Sand and just spreading that paint around just to uh, get the details to show um, obviously as always keep the uh, layers thin and just uh, bring those um, bring those browns together using a, a sort of a feathered sort of uh, method so uh, once I'd uh, and done that, I've waited whilst I'm waiting for them to dry. I'm throwing a uh, Carabird Crimson Wash, which has been thinned down, so I'm using a couple of layers of it uh, over the epaulets and the chest detail work. Now, if anybody knows what that bit's uh, called, uh, please let me know because I have no idea. Uh, something I haven't uh, thought about uh, <laughs> ever before, so uh, if anyone has, uh, has any ideas, let us know. Onto the trousers again. And the next layer is Dead Flesh, and I'm sort of feathering this uh, towards the uh, high points, so you, you get sort of a nice gradient highlight. Um, it's a bit like blending, I suppose, uh, but you're just uh, using the uh, the brush to do all the uh, work for you. And it's ever so gentle with the brush, pulling the um, highlights towards the points. And once I've uh, done a layer of Dead Flesh, Back to Screaming Skull, uh, just to finish off those highlights. Same same method, but keeping it inside the dead flesh areas as well. Uh, once that's been done, uh, I am going to throw a Agrax Earthshade Wash over the top, just to bring all those colours together um, and make that, uh, that transition make the transition really really sharp. So yeah, it's just a thin down Agrax Earthshade. Now, I'm only, I've only thinned it down with water, um, you've, if you've got lamy and medium obviously that's the best stuff to use. Uh, I didn't have any to hand, um, so I just uh, threw some water in it just to thin it down, just get that mix right. Now you want it about 50-50, um, so it uh, just seep, uh, it, it, it doesn't stay too glossy and it just seeps nicely into the uh, recesses. So here we are, back onto the sash and it's uh, and putting corn red on as a uh, as a second base. Um, like I said, I prefer. Uh, I think this is a more appropriate colour uh, for the sash than the gory red, and you get a much more muted um, tone from it rather than the gory red, which is quite bright. Onto the, uh, the chest and the epaulets again. And the first layer after the um, wash is golden yellow. Now I'm overbrushing this, which is essentially a, like a dry brush, only you're using um, wet paint on it, rather as a side to dry paint. Uh, and I'm just uh, going over the top of the um, detail work, and it just lets the uh, detail pick up the paint off your model. Like I said, same sort of technique as a dry brush, just with um, plenty of paint on there. Once I've done that, it is a next level uh, layer of um, golden yellow plus about 50-50 of ivory. Now ivory is an ongoing theme in this uh, particular colour scheme. I've decided to use the same um, tone changer for all the highlights in this. So uh, any uh, highlighting mix, I will be telling you again obviously, but it is all using uh, ivory uh, largely. Again, it's all overbrush work as well. 
and just uh, pulling the uh, detail together. So I've added a bit more ivory now, so you're now talking around about 75%, um, and that just uh, is again overbrushed very, very softly onto the uh, epaulets and onto the chest uh, region. Now I changed my mind on the skulls, I uh, decided to paint them in metallics at uh, a later date, but the, um, the system's there, uh, it's, all the set, um, it's all done the same way, like overbrushing technique, just pulling that paint across the, um, the detail work of the uh, model. I'm now throwing one last layer of ivory, and this is pretty much pure ivory at this stage, uh, just on the extreme highlights, uh, just to uh, make every uh, part of the detail work pop, you know, get that uh, top shine, what uh, really makes them all stand out. After that, it's Caribou Crimson, back into the recess, recesses. Uh, it has been thinned down slightly so it sinks into the recesses better and uh, so it doesn't um, stay on top of the surface. And that's just uh, placed into the um, uh, recesses between the, um, the rope and the epaulets just to make all them details just um, really stand out and make it look really cool. Okay, onto the sash again, and it is Mephiston Red, another GW paint there, and I'm, uh, again, I'm just working on the, uh, I'm working on the higher regions, obviously I'm getting some of the, uh, this colour into the recesses, but I'm trying to stay out of the really deep ones, as I want the uh, colour transition to be really, really nice, so I'm just spreading uh, some of the uh, paint into the lower recesses but uh, trying not to obscure any of the darker colour wherever possible. So next layer of uh, red is Wazdaka Red, which um, again I'm doing, just doing the same system, keeping things up to a, towards higher reach, uh, reaches of the model, but throwing that um, bit of a lighter colour into the uh, more raised areas of the recesses just to uh, throw that blend in. And uh, it's just working what would make sense to yourself. After that, it is Evil Suns, uh, which is almost a top highlight. I've still got a uh, slight bit of um, ra raised, uh, <laughs> a little bit more work to go. And I'm just throwing them final uh, colours into the um, upper reaches. Um, just blending them, uh, oh, the softer highlights out, softening them up a bit, making it look uh, a bit more smooth. And now I'm throwing a bit of ivory and a little bit of yellow in, uh, just to pull that um, highlight together, and make it a, so I can do a really pronounced edge highlight uh, towards the leaving edges, and that just makes everything just pop up that a little bit more. Now obviously you don't have to go as far, it's uh, just something I wanted to do. Uh, you can stop at any of the other layers, it's just the more layers you get, you can get on, as long as the layers are neat, often, as often as not the better the paint will look. So now throwing a Caribou Crimson on the uh, wash just to, uh, onto the slash, just to bring them colours together again. Um, and like I say, I'm painting this in a different method to what I normally do. I'm just throwing uh, certain colours in and then throwing a wash knife after the uh, fact. Uh, rather than adding shade to the model just to blend the colours in nicer. So next is silver and the base silver is oily steel this time. I'm not using uh, black metal. I believe uh, I felt that the um, the model was dark enough as it is so I wanted a slightly bright colour along the um, silver work as well as uh, all the extra external details. Uh, so I went with oily steel uh, which is probably akin to Ironbreaker uh, from the GW range. And onto the brass work, and the brass is uh, based in Brass Scorpion, um, which is uh, a favourite of Dodgers. He tends to use this method a lot. Uh, me, not so much, but I decided to borrow this one from, from him uh, this time around. And uh, I painted. Uh, the majority of it is just the um, 
around a gun, but also go back to the skulls on this chest plate and uh, I start putting the uh, brass scorpion onto that as well. So once the uh, brass scorpion had set, I am now onto Rune Lord Brass, which is um, again another GW one. Uh, you've got to be careful with this if it, um, as it's a very thin paint, so you really do need a decent base layer underneath it. Um, same with Psychorax, which I'll be using them shortly. Uh, they do need a good base coat underneath because uh, the pigment is so, so um, weak that you can't use it as a colour on its own. So, Psychorax Bronze now, which is on the upper reaches of all the uh, brass work. Um, just getting that nice shine. So, uh, although it's a weak colour, does look really well when you uh, get it over the top of the uh, room log. For an upper highlight, I'm using chain mail just to finish off the uh, edges on the uh, brass work. Just a little bit of silver, just up the upper, uh, upper touches, just to make the um, sections just pop out a little bit more. Uh, and then all uh, brought together with Agrax. Again, I'm doing the wash at the end uh, to add the uh, to blend the color transitions rather than just adding uh, depth to the figure itself. So you can use you can use washes for multiple things. They don't need to be. It's not just purely for adding shade. Uh, the sword is also highlighted in chainmail. Um, I'm keeping it towards the edge of the blade uh, rather than. Uh, highlighting too much on the flat. Uh, I wanted to make it look like it was sharp. So now we're using a bit of scale 75 um, on the coat trim, which is Violet's scale 75. I'm just throwing a little bit of um, purple around, uh, around the uh, trim of the coat. Gives it a sort of a regal look, makes them look a bit more important. It also breaks up the uh, blacks and the uh, other colours which I've uh, gone for. So it just uh, adds a little extra bit of colour to uh, make him a little bit more interesting. I also do the same thing around the trim of his hat as well. Then Agrax Earthshade Wash uh, into all the brass work. Uh, just to let that um, finish off and get nice and uh, get look look nice and clean together. Really uh, pull them uh, paints together. So the next um, paint is Alien Purple, which is Vallejo. Uh, throwing uh, that towards the um, leading edges of all the purple work. It just uh, brightens it up, gives you that uh, nice um, focal point on the uh, uh, tips of the coattails, etc. So, uh, as I've said before, I'm throwing some ivory into the mix now just to bolt, uh, finish off those highlights. That's uh, so probably about 25% ivory at this point, so um, still only a little bit. I'm just uh, using it for the extreme highlights just to really make them uh, areas pop up and make them look uh, like they really stand out. Now, I'm going back over onto the uh, rest of the, onto the rest of the fig, adding more high ivory to. Um, the extreme reaches of the highlights and this just to really make those highlights just really stand out and look extra uh, extra vibrant. Uh, I'll go around the entire uh, fig with the same colour, uh, just that um, extra thin highlight with the uh, ivory. I'll go around um, all the other all the other colours um, uh, with it. Now obviously on the red I've thrown a little bit more red onto it as well. Um, so it doesn't come up quite so uh, stark as uh, a white rather than a, a red. I wanted it to uh, 
uh, be very vibrant but still be red. So just uh, make sure that you get the um, paint the way you want it first uh, before you go over the top. Now I'm just doing a little bit of uh, top highlighting, a little bit of uh, very very gentle overbrushing towards the uh, center of the um, brocade, is it the brocade, the ch chest region, uh, just to really pick out those highlights with the ivory again, and um, just really make them stand out. The same again on his skin. Again, pure ivory this time. No need to. Uh, because it's, uh, the colours are already on a ivory, ivory sort of uh, a white sort of skin tone at this point, and just throwing it around the um, e e extremities, and it just brings out those uh, hard feature lines to a, a nice point. And there we are. Now we missed out on the uh, black. Uh, I do apologise for that. Uh, that was generally highlighted in a mix of um, black grey and scaling black, uh, much in the same way as the rest of the model. Now if this is the sort of thing you want to see, and uh, you want to see us doing more of the same sort of stuff, please hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends, and we shall catch you in the next one guys. Take care and have a good day. Bye bye.